Audition has a feature called snapping. It allows you to make precise selections. I'm going to cover snapping in this tutorial. If you want to follow along, open up the Gettysburg unedited WAV file by going to the Working Files folder, Narration subfolder, and then double clicking on that little file there. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens when I drag a selection. Now, in the previous tutorial, I sort of zipped by the numeric divisions in the time ruler, but now I'm going to go a little more slowly and watch what happens when I get to that one minute mark. Boom, it jumps right to that little one minute line. I'll go over here and watch it jump to this one. Right to that 110 line. Let's go to 120. Bang. So those guys are easy to select. That's because we have snapping enabled. And you can tell snapping is enabled by looking up here in the upper right hand corner, looking at that little magnet. That magnet, when it's pushed in like that, when it's black around it, that means that you have snapping enabled. If I turn it off by clicking it again to disable snapping, now when I make a selection, it just slides right past that numeric division. No stopping involved, no snapping at all. So I think snapping is a good thing to have on, and it's on by default. It helps you make very precise selections based on the time ruler. If you zoom in, you have different kind of divisions, but again, every major division where this line snapping will occur. I'll just drag along, and it snaps to that line. So wherever you zoomed in, it'll snap to whatever the major line is. I'll zoom back out by pressing the backslash key. Another thing that works with snapping is called markers. So if I add a marker, let's say right here, moving my current time indicator there and pressing the M key to add a marker. Now when I want to make an edit right to that point, let's say I want to go from here to that point, it'll snap to the marker. Notice how it snapped to the marker there? Very helpful. If I want to select an area, make a selection like this, and I want to put markers around that, I press the M key again and put markers around both of that. Now if I drag two, it'll snap to that marker. It'll snap to the marker on the other side or it comes in from the side and will snap to the marker like that. So it's nice to have this little snapping feature selected. It helps you make really precise edits. So snapping to markers and snapping to what's called the coarse numeric division of the time ruler are the default behaviors of snapping, but there are other possibilities. So let me open up Edit Menu Command and go down to Snapping. Here are the various possibilities. Snap the markers and snap the ruler coarse or on by default. S is the keyboard shortcut to enable or disable snapping. Then here's a little option that says Snap to Ruler Fine. If you have that on, instead of this, you can't have both. You can only have one or the other. Then it will snap to these finer divisions between the larger numeric divisions here in the time ruler. So whatever small little lines like that are between them, it'll snap to that, which can be good if you want to make a really precise edit to time, but also can be kind of annoying because it snap, 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 snap as you go across the line here. If you get really close, you get a lot of little lines. So you have that on or off depending on how precise you want it to be. Snapping the clips and loops are things that work inside a multi-track session, and we'll talk about them when we get to the multi-track session. Snapping to frames is something that happens if you have a video file and you have frames running up here instead of this decimal system we have now. And even with video in there, you don't have to have frames up here, but if you do, then it'll snap to each individual frame. And finally, what the heck is snap to zero crossings? Well, actually, that's a pretty cool thing, and I think it's good to have that on. I like having that on, even though it's not the default setting. So I'm going to click it, and that turns it on. Believe me, it's on. I'll go back and show you. Even though it closed the window, it's now on. You see that? So I'll go back, and I'll show you what that means to snap to zero crossings. The zero crossing line is right here. And so if you can make an edit where the waveform is just crossing the line, then you're going to avoid having any kind of clicks and pops. Now, if you look in Preferences, Edit or Adobe Audition Preferences, and go to Data, You'll see that there are these two things that I've talked about when I talked about preferences before. It says smooth delete or cut boundaries with a crossfade of two milliseconds and smooth edit boundaries by a crossfade of five milliseconds. You have those guys selected like that because that tends to cut out little clicks and pops at edit points. But if you edit at the crossing line, at the zero crossing line, then you are guaranteed not to have any weird little sounds going on. So I'm going to make a selection right like that. And there's just no way I could have found the zero crossing point when I've zoomed out this far. But I'll show you what happens if you have that selected inside the snapping features. I'm going to right click here and zoom in on it. There we go. I'm going to right click and zoom in on this spot right there to get in even tighter. There we go. And look at that. See where the waveform just crosses the zero crossing line? So with that snap feature on, it made the edit point right at that zero crossing line. That's very helpful when it does that. And it did it on the right hand side too. If we were to scroll across, it does it that way too. So that's how I use the snapping feature inside Audition to make precise selections.